Hey, how are we going everybody? Welcome to episode three of Bricks and Bites. It's great to be with you this afternoon. We've got heaps to look at today. Um, and I hope you've got some Lego because we're going to do our five minute frenzy challenge. Um, but if you were here last week, um, thanks for being part of uh, our little builds. We, our five minute frenzy last week was um, building a family. So there's a whole bunch of different families that we uh, built. There's a family of scarecrows there. Pretty cool. We also had a challenge for you to go out and take some Lego photos. And I have to say, there were some really, really good Lego photos where people were getting down low and um, taking photos of their little minifigures. We had a lot of fun. Um, so this week, we are going to be uh, chatting with Georgie and Carno from the Marine Discovery Center. We're going to have a bit of an underwater theme and we'll talk to you a little bit more about that. We'll have a look at something called Tensegrity. Now, if you've been um, on the Lego pages, you may have heard of Tensegrity, but if not, I'll walk, walk you through that. And at the end, we have a, uh, a special guest with us today doing our app of the week and I'll introduce her to you a little bit later on. Um, but uh, thanks again for joining and if you have your Lego, I think it's time that we do our five minute frenzy. Now last week, as I said, we did a family for our five minute frenzy. Um, I'm going to have a look inside of our cup um, and we'll have a look at what's our challenge for this week. All right. Okay. I haven't looked, <laughs> I haven't looked at what this is. I'm going to, before I open it, I'm going to switch over to this camera so you'll be able to see it probably before I do. What is, what is it? What is it? Bailey, <laughs> Bailey aged 11 wants us to make a cat's face. Okay, a very um, a very specific challenge for us today, a cat's face. So if you have your uh, Lego there, um, I'm going to start a little timer on, our, our, on my phone, five minutes, and when we hear the alarm go off, that will be when it's time for us to finish. So I'm going to turn this volume up. A cat's face. All right, if you get your Lego there. I've got my Lego here, and I would have thought that by, you know, by now I probably would have learned what parts are in here. So I'm going to pour this out and have a think about a cat's face. Okay, are we ready? We're going to hit the timer. Okay, let's start building a cat's face. Five minutes on the clock. All right. So first things first, I'm going to change my camera so you can see what I'm going to build. A cat's face, a cat's face. Um, first up, let's see what we could use for a cat's face. A cat has ears and a whisk and whiskers. All right. Eyes, eyes would be helpful. Um, <laughs> all right, here, we've got, that's, that's one eye. So let's have a look at an eye. Let's see if we can find another eye. There we go. I think this is an eye from one of our people last week. So we have a winking, a winking cat. What else can we do? All right, so let's start building that face. So we need to put, let's give, let's put the eyes on here like that. And uh, <laughs> we need, uh, okay, we need like a, a nose. What? I'm even trying to like picture what a cat looks like. Um, and some whiskers. Let's have a look what we could do for whiskers. I, I have a feeling this is going to end up being a, a rabbit, but <laughs> got three minutes. All right, here we go. We've got one there. Um, we need some more of those parts. Those would be really good, but I can't find it. All right, let's keep going with the rest of the cat. So what else do we need for a cat's face? I guess we need, um, let's see if we can work on some ears. Some ears for, oh, this looks cool. So can we do like, I don't know, let's, let's do it like that. Sort of like off to an angle. Can you guys see that? Um, 
Do I have another one of those? That'll be handy. No, I've only got one. Okay, so let's <laughs> change tact. Here we go. We've got two of these parts. Okay, so two of these sloping parts. Okay, let's pop these up. Like, oh yeah. We've got, you know, sort of like cat ears. Cat ears. <laughs> All right, we're about halfway through. I'm a bit stuck. On a cat's face. A cat's face. What else do we need for a cat's face? If you if you can leave me a comment in the <laughs> in the in the in the Facebook feed, that'll be great. You give me some tips on what I can add for a cat's face. Let's think about some whiskers, hey? What have I got? I sort of want to use this part. This is a this is a pretty cool part. If I use that for whiskers, then I could put like this for a nose. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. No. <laughs> ah, yes. That, let's layer it. Okay, yes, let's use that. This will be crazy cat whiskers. All right, we're going to do like, we're going to borrow some inspiration from when we did that spider. You know, we use this same sort of part. And we clip all these things on. All right, we've got some longer ones here. Oh, no. Oh, that doesn't look very cat-like, does Ben? No. Okay, Bailey, this this is tough. You've given me such a tough challenge. I'm really struggling. Okay. Oh, no, we've only got one minute. Okay, 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 okay. All right, we need whiskers. Let's get those whiskers on. Okay, let's do that for whiskers, and then we can do, like... All right, let's pop that there, and then... And then a nose, quick, quick. A nose, is that gonna work as a nose? No, it's too big. Uh, this one, here we go. Let's do that as a nose. We have 22 seconds. I'm, Bailey, okay. Oh. <laughs> oh dear, okay, so we have nine seconds on the clock. And uh, my cat's face just exploded. Um, and this is, this looks like this is all that's left. So we've got like a bit of a nose here. And that's time. Oh dear. Oh no. That is, um, <laughs> it looks horrible. <laughs> okay. Thank you for our five minute frenzy <laughs> challenge. I'm going to call that one a, uh, you know, an exercise in learning experiences in um, maybe, maybe I should learn uh, my animals a bit more and think about what a cat's face actually looks like. My goodness. All right. Well, that was certainly a challenge. If you manage to make an awesome cat's face, post it on our Facebook page, or you can jump in the Bricks and Bytes Facebook group and share your photos there. If your, if your cat's face wasn't so great, I'd still love to see that as well and see how, how you try to bring all the parts together. All right, I think I need to have a bit of a practice with these parts. Um, well, let's keep moving. So today I want to introduce you guys to Georgie and Carno from the uh, Marine Discovery Centre. Now, the Marine Discovery Centre, they're closed at the moment to the public. But what's fantastic is that on Facebook, they've been sharing some really cool videos about the animals they have there and, um, and some of the cultural um, significance of, of the work that they do. So if you want to check out a little bit more about them, please visit their Facebook page and see their videos. Um, but let's hear a little bit um, from them and take a bit of a tour of what the Marine Discovery Centre looks like. So here we go. Hi everyone at Bricks and Bites. My name is Georgie and I'm the marine scientist. How you going everyone? My name is Kano and I'm the cultural educator here at the Marine Discovery Centre in Henley Beach. Uh, well, we welcome 7,000 school students every year 
and today what we thought we'd do is just show you around and give you a good feel of some of the things that we have here. So, so we'll start with our marine creatures. So this room that we're in now is our marine life room. Most of our creatures that we have here at the centre are from South Australia, so we really like to highlight all of the beautiful local animals that we have in here in South Australia. So we're going to go and have a look at a couple of these local animals now. And the first team we'll have a look at is our beautiful seahorses. Uh, we have some pot-bellied seahorses down here who are all curling their tails around some of the plants here in their tank. Then we'll have a quick look at our Port Jackson shark in our next tank. All of these creatures, they're temperate marine animals, which means they live in cold water, or usually around the waters of southern Australia. Here we've got our southern fiddler ray, who's also a bottom feeder, just like the Port Jackson shark. So sharks and rays are actually related. They're from the same family of creatures, which have uh, cartilage instead of bones that make up their skeleton. The last animal in this tank is our beautiful porcupine fish who's hiding there at the back. We've got quite a big porcupine fish there, so they will obviously inflate themselves when they're feeling afraid. Our other two marine creatures in this room are our cowfish, our shores cowfish, and another smaller porcupine fish as well. They're also known as globe fish or uh, puffer fish as well. Now we'll just show you guys over here, we've also got a couple of tropical animals. So rather than being temperate cold water, these guys are some tropical eels. So these, instead of being from South Australia, would be around from the Indo-Pacific Islands and then found around coral reefs and rocky reefs in that area. So these were actually somebody's pets, but now we get to showcase them here at the Marine Discovery Centre and show some people some tropical animals. Alright guys, follow us, we're going to explore some more of the centre this way. Alright, so uh, another big part of some of the things that we do here to educate people and kind of encourage um, different ways of thinking is about, uh, I guess what we call a carbon footprint and the things that we do in our day-to-day -day, um, activities and how they might have an effect on the environment. So a lot of the activities that we do have around here will, um, based on those, will be based on those things. Um, if it's how long certain items take before they are broken down, where we need to place certain items, if it's in recycling, landfill or, um, or organics. Um, and we also show some of the things that we find that are more or less common uh, being rubbish items down at the beach as well. So, um, we have a lot of interactive games that kind of touch base on a lot of these things as well. Um, if it, again, it is stormwater pipes or if it is how everything in nature is connected, if it is how much water we use in uh, while we're having the shower and so on. So, um, I guess we better move into the next room. So if you guys just want to follow us through. All right guys, this brings us into our biggest room at the center. This is our beach discovery room. This is where we have lots and lots of touch tables, stuff that you can hold, look up close, find out the sorts of things that we do commonly find down here in South Australian beaches and find out a bit of extra information about them. So we might want to check them out with microscopes, having a look at some of the preserved animals as well that we have in some of the jars and finding out where a lot of these creatures and these items come from. So as a part of this room as well, we've also got some habitat tables, we've got some whale bones over in the corner, so we've got lots and lots of really cool stuff for you guys to check out when you can come and visit us here at the Marine Discovery Centre. And our lucky last room is our cultural education room. So in here is where we touch base on the traditional ways of living 
from the Aboriginal people and kind of connect them to how everything in, in nature is connected and how we live sustainably together with the animals and um, the plants and everything. Um, so, I guess that is pretty much it with all the rooms that we have. It's been great joining, um, joining you today, guys. For more facts and information about some of the things that we have here at the Marine Discovery Centre, all you have to do is just find us via social media or just check out our website at www.marinediscoverycentre.com. We've also got a lot of great educational videos that have just popped up on YouTube, so you can follow us around a bit more in depth in the centre on our YouTube channel. So thank you so much, guys. See Bye. ya. Hey, that was really cool. Thanks, Georgie and Kano, for what you're doing. Um, and thanks for the tour. Now, um, for everyone else, if you want to see what they're up to, as I said, they have their website and their YouTube channel. You can also have a look at their Facebook page where they have um, a whole bunch of videos of them looking a little bit more closer at the animals. And they have some 360 degree videos as well. So if you've got your phone or a tablet, you can either swipe the screen to look all around or you can move uh, the tablet and you'll be able to see all around you um, as you go underwater for a bit of a tour so there's some really really cool videos um, over on their Facebook page so with that in mind there's a bit of a uh, we have a bit of an underwater theme I think so um, today's Lego challenge is going to be under the sea now it'll be great to see if you can think about, you know, what sort of things would you love to see under the sea or what sort of would it be like an imaginary world or it'd be one of your favorite animals? Um, we'd love to see what you build. Now, I'm going to show you a few things um, with this under the sea challenge. So what I've done, I've built a little, I've built a little uh, rocky outcrop here that's under underwater. And what I want to do is show you a few things that you can do with this because under the sea, um, you're thinking about, you know, things float under the sea. So can you create floating objects using your uh, Lego build? So let's flick over to here. And I'm going to show you three different ways you can do this. Okay, so the first way we're going to do this um, is we're going to... Okay, we're going to use... Um, some clear parts. So these are, you know, these sorts of clear parts. And because they're clear, it sort of gives the impression that um, that whatever you're putting on them is floating. Okay. So I'm going to put a little little underwater vehicle on top of those. So here's a little sort of underwater sort of ship or chariot or something. There we go. So that's one way that you can make your Lego builds float uh, when they're under the sea. Another way that you could do it is to use a rod like this. So you can see on this fish, we've put a little rod on the side and that rod is going to go into these holes that you can see in the rocks. What's cool about that is that when you're looking at it and the rod is on the side, you can't actually see the rod, so it still looks like the fish is floating. So let me put that in there and see what it looks like. Okay, so you can see, whoop, there's, so it's floating. There's nothing underneath it. You got a floating fish. Let's pop another one on. There we go, have a, another floating fish. It's pretty handy, isn't it? Pretty nifty. So I'll just turn this around so you can see what it looks like from the side. So you can see here that those bars are holding it off to off the rocks. But when you're looking at it from, say, this angle or from front on, it actually looks like it's floating. Now, there's one more way that you can make things float. And... Um, this is a little bit trickier. Now, I'll play you a video and you can watch and see what happens when we play with this thing called tensegrity. Okay, so 
at the moment, there is this idea that you can use these sort of strings or chains, and if you put them in the right position, you can actually make them float. And there's been a big challenge online at the moment where different people are doing different versions of this. There we go. So you can pick it up and it'll float. That's pretty cool. So you can see that there's tension on the different parts of the strings. Now, I guess we could go into the physics and the maths and all of that, but um, you know, the truth is it's, it's magic. <laughs> No, but there are some really cool instructions. So, huge sh shout out to um, to the team who've let us borrow their footage. And um, if you do want to see how to do that, um, you can head along to our Facebook page, or uh, sorry, our Bricks and Bytes Real Talk Facebook group. And I'll put a link in there um, to JK Brickworks. That was the first video, and there's instructions on how to build that model. So, I've had a bit of a think about how we can do that in an underwater setting. Now, here's my version of Tensegrity. Now, I didn't actually have all the parts that I needed for this. So I had to borrow some from, from one of my friends, Imogen, and she gave me some chains that we're gonna play with. So I'm gonna show you this on the front camera. Okay, so let's move this model out of the way. So here you go. So I've done it a little bit differently. Instead of, I had one long chain uh, there in the middle, so I wrapped it around and doubled it over, so it's folded on, in on itself. But you can see here, that's sort of in the air, and then if we take it down, it's all loose. So there's no sort of solid parts of the Lego holding it. It's pretty cool, pretty cool. Alright, so how can we do that with our Lego model over here? So. Now, we had a bit of a play, thinking underwater theme. What would be cool if we could have something pulling the chariot? I'm going to see if this works. Now, the joys of live, uh, live shows is that this could fail horribly. <laughs> well, let's see how we go. Hey, there we go. Now, let's see if I can I'll pick this up and bring you a bit closer. So here we go. We have our little character here holding on to the reins and there's tension around that black string around the, around the rope and tension where he's holding it. And so we have ourselves a fun little underwater scene where we have, check that out. We have three different ways to make things float. All we need to add is a little bit of decoration and I think we'll be done with this. There we go, how does that look? Okay, so there we go, there's our little under the sea model. I'd love to see what you come up with your un or when you do an under the sea Lego challenge this week. Make sure again you post the photos in our Bricks and Bytes Facebook group or on our Facebook page, we'd love to see them. Well, there you go. Now, it's time for the app of the week. So we've had a look at, you know, different ways that we can use apps and different ways that we can use technology. Um, last week we looked at the iNaturalist app, we looked at the Photoshop Mix app, and today I have a special guest, Emma, who's going to talk you through Google Earth. Google Earth's really fun, so I'm going to hand over to Emma. Hey guys, I'm going to show you guys all about Google Earth today. So some of you may have heard of it before, but Google's done some really cool stuff and they've got some really awesome features on there. So we're gonna jump straight in on my iPad. So in this row here, you can see the little Google Earth icon. So we're just gonna open that straight up and go straight into it. And we're right zoomed in on the ocean there. So we'll zoom us all back out just by pinching the screen and you can see the globe. We can see if we can find Australia, there we are. And you've got this little toolbar to the left here. So on there, we're just going to click the little magnifying glass to search. 
And I've already typed it in, but you can search whatever you want. You could search your house or your school, but we're gonna search the Cove Civic Center, which is where Ben and I are today at a very empty library without all your smiley faces. But here we go, it's zooming us in and there we are. So you can see all the streets around and all the different parts are up at Hallett Cove. And if we click on this little section on the right, it's called a knowledge card. And if we click on that, you can see some pictures of in the library and all of that. And then if we go back out, I'll show you another cool feature. On the toolbar over here, there's a little square with five dots in it, and that's called feeling lucky. So if we click on that one, it's gonna take us to somewhere random in the world. So today we're in Oregon in the US at the top of a mountain, it looks like. A stratovolcano it's telling me, that's pretty interesting. And you'll see down the bottom in the right hand corner, there's a little person symbol. If we click on that, that'll give us street view and you can see these little blue dots. If we click on one of those, it's gonna load us so that we're standing right here on the top of this volcano. And here we've got a 360 panoramic view that we can just scroll with our finger across and see. So we can see some of the people who probably took this photo and put it on Google Earth for all of us to see. And there's this amazing view, look at that. So that's street view. Now Google Earth, if we go back, has this other awesome feature, which is on the toolbar here with the steering wheel. So if we click on that, it brings up this page and this is called Google Voyager. So this has street view as well. If we click over here today to go with our underwater theme, we're gonna scroll through all these awesome places and go to the animals and wildlife of the world. And you can see there's all these different locations that it's gonna take us to. And I think we're gonna look at some dolphins. So here we go, we've got another 360. You can see some divers and we can see all these dolphins. And if we click the arrows down here, that's gonna take us to another view of some more dolphins. And you can travel underwater. I can see a creature there, I'm not sure what that is. Or we can keep going some more and it's like you're actually underwater which is pretty cool with these divers who I'm sure took some of these pictures so that's street view and you can go to all of these really cool places and we can see where it is in the world down in Brazil which is very far away from us and if we go out the one last thing I want to show you guys on Google Voyager you've got all this stuff to the right some educational stuff, some stuff about nature, you can learn heaps, but they've also got games, which is always everyone's favorite part, I'm sure. So there's heaps of quizzes and there's some searching games where you can find stuff in the world. But today we're gonna to do an animal sounds game, which I think is pretty hilarious. There's some really fun sounds in this game. So let's hit let's go and it'll take us to the quiz. All right, so I'm gonna play you guys a sound and it might probably make you laugh. I'm sure it'll make Ben laugh. So here we go. All right, so where do we think that sound came from? It could be a Weddell seal, an emperor penguin, or a cormorant. I'm gonna say that's a seal. There we go, I got it right. So we'll go to the next one and we'll listen to this sound. Ooh, so that one could be a sea cow or a dolphin or a humpback whale. I think I've watched Finding Nemo and in that they make some real cool humpback whale noises. So I'm gonna say it's a humpback whale. What about you guys? Do you think it is? Yes, here we go. We got it right. And now it's gonna take us to where this humpback whale lives. And we're gonna get one of those awesome views. Look at that. It's like it's right there. You can zoom in. Look at its cool features. This would be ginormous. All right. Well, I'm gonna stop it with the quiz there. 
But you guys can jump on Google Earth. It's free to download. It's got heaps of awesome stuff you can explore through. Try out some of those quizzes. Have a search for your house. See if you can see your mum or your dad standing out the front checking the letterbox. Something fun. Check your school out. And yeah, have some fun with Google Earth. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Thanks, Emma. That was, uh, that was really good. I uh, didn't realise those quizzes were there, so that's fun. I, I, last time I played with Google Earth, I really enjoyed the um, where in Google Earth is Carmen San Diego. That's from, you know, I remember back in the day, I think I was in year seven, we used to play where is in the world is Carmen San Diego. So it's great to see that she's making a comeback. <laughs> All right, well, that brings us to the end of another episode of Bricks and Bytes. Now, just quickly, for next week, we're going to be chatting with Andrew from Cheap Jokes. Now, Andrew, um, he's got about 14, 000, or over 14,000 subscribers on, uh, on YouTube, and he does some really, really good stop-motion animation, and he's going to be talking to us about, um, or he'll be answering your questions about stop motion um, he also does some really good behind the scenes interviews with the current lego masters competitors so if you love lego masters at the moment definitely check out andrew's youtube channel um, at cheap jokes but if you want to ask andrew any questions jump in our bricks and bytes facebook group and leave a question for him there and then i'll send them off to him and he'll answer them for us next week because next week we're going to be talking about stop motion video so that's gonna be really excited uh, really exciting and we look forward to seeing you there so have a good rest of the evening bye